it's not an easy job. It is yeah. not an easy job. And and certainly we're, we're not the, the species that lays 500 eggs and says, see ya, <laughs> good luck. Right. You know, right. we, yeah, we're all about parental investment. So Sheila is joining us here for the new Disney Pixar film, Elemental, out in theaters right now. She plays Cinder Lumen. So Sheila, tell us a little bit about your character and about the film. Hello. Um, So Cinder Lumen is a fire character, and she lives in a city called Element City. Element City is where four of the classic elements like fire, water, earth, and air all live together. Of course, they came from different, their own different element lands. And for whatever reason, they needed to immigrate into the city. And uh, Cinder is the, her fire town's matchmaker. So she's able to smell if there is a love connection between fire people through their smoke. And she's such a good matchmaker that she's made many, many, many matches throughout her 20 years of living here. And much to her dismay, her daughter, beautiful girl named Ember, who is fun and funny and quick-witted and uh, smart and uh, spicy, meaning she, you know, she's got a bad temper. Yeah. Um, she hasn't been able to find a match for her daughter. So that's, that's the thorn in her side. Gotcha, gotcha. I was able to check out the film and it is such a, a beautiful movie of really representing, you know, different different cultures and backgrounds in a in a very unique way that Disney and Pixar has done over the years. When it came to to this role, was this something that was presented to you? Um, you know, how did the, the, the process come about of uh, of becoming Cinder? Brian, I couldn't believe my great fortune. I was so honored when out of nowhere, Peter Son, the director, contacted me and uh, his team set up a Zoom interview. It was like a four-hour Zoom interview. And he had me go through all of Cinder's lines and we went through the Cinder's character arc. And and Peter told me that this character was based on his own mom and that, um, you know, they, they'd seen 27 incredible actresses and voiceover artists already but for some reason their voice wasn't matching his mom's there was some tone there was something in his mom's voice that he, he felt that my voice matched thank you. Oh, the stars <laughs> and so sometime at the end of that uh i don't remember if it was that night or the next day that i found out that i had the part and i was just amazed Oh gosh, that's such a amazing. story. That's that's amazing. I did not know that it was uh, based on a character by his mom. So that's some. Did you feel mm-hmm. a little bit of pressure then? You know, once. Oh, a know. whole lot of pressure. <laughs> oh, honey, I I felt so much pressure that um, you know because it's also his mom's passed away, and it was so important for me to do a good job for her soul and for Peter, who's entrusting me with this. That I started taking some. Now I've been doing voiceover work for twenty years, but I started taking some serious classes in voiceover um, uh, from this teacher in New York, and they were very expensive. Let me tell you that. <laughs> so I took about a dozen classes on Zoom, kaching, 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 and they were basically exercises, doing this and ya ya ya. <laughs> but no, but I, I think it really helped. Awesome, awesome. I hope it did. Oh no, it, it definitely did. I mean, your your voice, I just love it. The the movie itself, like I said, it's it's such a, a fun and unique journey with you know ups and downs, just like we have in life. And uh, you know, just just out of curiosity, I had a couple people ask me to ask this question to you: Have you had any personal moments in your life where you were a matchmaker for you know maybe friends or family or anything like that? Are you kidding me? Have you heard about me? Have my friends been complaining to you? <laughs> no. Yeah, I am such a matchmaker. This is this is this is one of my passions in life. Okay. okay. And when I see people who I feel a connection to and I see that they're single and I see someone else that I feel a total connection to, I try to put them together and it has never worked not once. <laughs> not once. Goodness. It'll happen. It'll happen maybe now with the movie out then that this is going to bring you you know, the luck that you need there to have the little Cupid's arrow going on for, for the matchmaking. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? 
Now, when it, when it came to the, the casting crew, were you able to meet each other in person? Was this all done virtually as far as the recording? You know, what was that, what was that process like when, as you're actually making the film and doing the voice acting? So the Pixar Studios is in the Bay Area and I live in Southern California. And so what they would do is they'd rent a, a sound studio and I'd go into somewhere in Burbank or anywhere close to me. Uh, it was a couple different studios. And so I would I, I met Peter I, uh, through Zoom. Okay. And Peter and uh, Denise Reem and, and the other, you know, the, the writers and uh, animators through Zoom. And so I, I would do it and Peter would direct me and uh, brilliantly, I might add, because uh, I think for, for the most part, pretty much all the characters, maybe not so much Wade and Ember, I think they were most of the times in the studio together because there's so much um, chatting and batter that goes on between them. Mm -hmm. But I certainly wasn't. I, I didn't meet anyone else. Okay. So it was Peter's orchestration that made it seem as though we're speaking to each other. And there's so much, um, uh, I, I guess, I don't know about charisma, but connection between the characters. Okay. And yeah, that's a great follow-up question here. Uh, again, one of our fans wanted to ask, when you're doing voiceover work like this and you don't have that other actor or actress you know, in the scene with you, you know, do you have someone else kind of maybe in the room or another Zoom chat reading off the lines? Or is this just something where it's just Peter's directing you and you just have to, you know, have faith in him and he's got faith in you to just deliver? And, you know, how, how does that process work a little bit? I've always, like, I've always been curious about that. Yeah, Peter would read the other people's lines. Okay. So, so it was like I, I was acting off of Peter. And Peter is such a brilliant voiceover artist himself. You know, he was the, the voice of socks. Good night, Buzz. And of Emil in, in Ratatouille, the, the brother of um, uh, in Ratatouille. I don't like secrets. All this cooking and, 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 and reading and TV watching. I don't know if you knew, but you know, in Up, the little the, the boy character Russell, I yeah. think was his name, was he's created um, as he, he's he's a sketch of of Peter Son as a cartoon character. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, so in terms of, you know, when it comes to voice acting, obviously the difficulty level still has to be there compared to being, you know, right on camera. Do you have a different process? I know you were talking about you were doing the kind of stretches and, and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, is your process to get ready for a scene a little bit different than when you're, you know, acting and moving around and, and things like that, like you, like you are in Tehran? Uh, yeah, it, it is a different process. Um, you know, the, the fact that it's voiceover work and um, I don't have to be self-conscious about my face and my body. Yeah. All of my focus is going on voicing yeah. so I can be as big as I want and silly. And it just it only helps the, the voice of the character. So I, I'm a lot less self-conscious when I'm doing voiceover than when I'm doing film this I, this is a face for voiceover and yes, for theater no. far <laughs> away I, I don't have one of those um yeah no seriously like you know on on Tehran the uh Sean Tube who's a dear friend of mine and he mm -hmm. plays my husband I'm so often just mesmerized by just his face just says volumes and he's doing nothing and and I, I feel like I have to do so much anyway Oh, lies. enough about lies, my insecurities. lies, lies. <laughs> well, we all have them. I mean, I suffer from depression and anxiety. So, you know, even just you? getting, you know, you know, it's something that I've been working on. I actually started the podcast because of it, um, you know, primarily because I wanted to. I enjoy this this process. I'm just such a fan. I grew up watching mm. movies and shows with my family. And I have a 21 year old daughter that has grown up with me, you know, watching movies. And yeah, she went to film school and she's now getting into the industry. She just did her, her first production assistant uh, role here in Winston-Salem. Oh, Carolina. how wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh. you. I'm a very, very proud dad. So this is something that, uh, you oh, know, it helps great. with that. But I still get nervous, you know, especially meeting talented people like yourself. I've been, been doing this five years and, you know, my wife, she's like, I just don't get it. You just seem so natural. I was like, it's just built into me. I just have nerves. And then once we start talking, then they kind of start going away. It's great. And, and, and you make people feel so comfortable. By the way, happy Father's Day. 
Thank you. Thank you. And one of the things that I I uh, realize I'm so ha- and I feel like it's not a coincidence that this movie is opening on Father's Day because it's deals with such a beautiful connection between a father and a daughter and it reminds me that fathers need much more acknowledgement than they have been getting throughout the past hundreds of years um they they need a lot more acknowledgement i feel that the more that we give fathers love and respect and acknowledge them when they are being so phenomenal and holding up the world for their families to be able to thrive and uh foregoing their own comfort for the comfort of their families that the more love we give them the more uh, fathers will be created that are uh, wonderful dads in future generations oh my goodness thank you so much for saying that it, it means the world and it's true i mean I, I'm, I'm blessed to have two great parents that raised mm. me with a lot of chivalry you know respect mm. honor and i you know i pass that down to my daughter and Whenever she has children, I know she'll pass it on down to hers. And mm. It's definitely one of those things to where, uh, you know, always I just uh, I just applaud good parents. Period. Uh, you know, moms, dads, everybody. Absolutely, it's absolutely. <laughs> it's not an easy job. It is yeah. not an easy job, and and certainly we're we're not the the species that lays five hundred eggs and says see ya, <laughs> good luck. Right. You know, right. we yeah we're all about parental investment, and so I I'm just thrilled and honored when I see parents being good parents oh, thank you. either don't do it but when you're gonna do it do your absolute best i could not could not agree more not saying i'm perfect by any means definitely of course on the road i was a very young dad uh fortunately mm, and i've learned really? from my mistakes and you know the great thing is i enjoy sharing those mistakes with my daughter i want her to know that people are oh. not perfect and that you know mm. things in life happen and it's how you overcome the obstacles that help make you a great person which i think you know uh elemental has like a, a lot of those themes in there as well as you mentioned the father daughter dynamic that was one of the things i noticed and this weekend we're actually taking our nieces and nephews to go see the movie since i i got to see it during the press screener uh you know i was sitting there bragging to my family about it so we're excited to be able to take our nieces and nephews and just seeing them grow up, you know, enjoying mm. beautiful films like this, Disney, the Disney Pixar experience. It's something that I'm always going to cherish and especially just the movie theater going experience. I know we were all worried during the pandemic, our theater is going to make mm. it. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, I believe that theaters will be here for a long time coming because it's, it's, Oh, I sure hope so. Yeah. It's comfortable to watch stuff at home. Don't get me wrong. My wife enjoy it. Yeah. And I enjoy a good couch time, you know, checking right. out wonderful shows like Tehran, but nothing beats yeah. going to the movie theater and enjoying some of that popcorn. Yeah. And especially with a, with a movie like this, that is just such a stunning movie to watch. And the music is so amazing. It's, it's, it's made for a theatrical experience, but I really hope that your daughter knows how lucky she is to have a dad like you. One of the, uh, one of the things that uh, Ember's character um, resonated uh, for me so much was her, um, you know, it's that immigrant experience that we yeah. children of immigrants yeah. uh, have such a um, uh, super sharp awareness of mm-hmm. what, sacrifices our parents have made to give us a better life and um, with that comes a a lot of gratitude and um, honor and also a lot of guilt and um, you know just feeling like why can't I be a better daughter or a better son and and it, it really brought tears to my eyes to see Ember going through it because it totally, I'm like, I've been there. To fill my father's yeah. shoes. Same, same, same here as, you know, my parents came, came here from Puerto Rico. My mom knew no English at all. Mm. I was three years old when I came here. I didn't know any English. My dad was the only one that knew English. So it really helped pave the way for us. And it's just, uh, you see that in the, in the story. And it's so just, uh, you know, illuminating not to, you know, no pun intended, but, uh, <laughs> right. the, you know, the, the, the elements as they're laid out and, and such a wonderful story. So do you have any, any plans this upcoming weekend for Father's Day? Um, I'm in the UK and we are planning on going to see the UK screening uh this weekend and uh but i will certainly thanks for reminding me i'm, I'm gonna need to connect uh, with my heart to my dad who passed away many years ago gotcha. but oh boy how how much i wish that he would have qualities that you have um i mean i i, I really love him but um you know he was much older when i yeah. was born 
much money. If he was alive today, he'd be 110 years old. Gotcha. So, you know, I was an accident. And uh. <laughs> you get to a certain age when you don't yeah. want to get that anymore. But yeah, yeah. I mean, but, for, but for he me, was a wonderful human being. That's that's great to hear, and definitely prayers to, to you and your family. And I like how you said that, you know, Thank to you. connect. So, I mean, right. for me, it was definitely one of those things as I got older, the more. You know, I think I took it for granted when I was younger, being being a dad, and I was lucky enough to have a great support system. And her mo- her mother, her mother and I, even though we weren't together, we I feel that we co-parent very well, and that's super important. Mm-hmm. Um, for wonderful, for it's so important. Yeah. Now, um, last question. I know we got to wrap up real quick. When it comes to these uh, premieres and these red carpet events. How, uh, you know, how exciting is it for you? And like, how long of a day is it between, you know, just kind of the press? I know you're doing the press junket now, but, you know, is it still like a sense of excitement in the air? Is it one of those things to where it gets, you know, be repetitive? Like, you know, what's the premiere experience like for you? Oh, yeah, for me, it's not repetitive. It's it's really exciting, but it's also, it, it's not easy for me. Sure. At all, because there are cameras involved and, um and and you can't just you know you can't just slump the way I am and and talk to you and have a good time. You you you're you know a lot of times you're wearing something that uh, whoever designed that something you're wearing is expecting you to look fabulous in. Yeah. And so so there's a lot of for me there's a lot of pressure. I know there's um, women, especially a, a lot of young girls and young women that think oh it's so glamorous but I, I'm not into the glamour of it I love like my dream is to be a really really good actor and a good voiceover artist so every single time that I get a part I put all my energy in uh, doing the very best job that I can um, but I don't shine at premieres yeah oh stop it you shine to me I feel like you shine anytime thank you walk in the room so come on bless you thank you so much that's because you're such a good papa oh, <laughs> and believe me you're an inspiration to people like myself you know I've, I've considered voice acting for quite some time now and I want to finally make that leap but I know it's not just an overnight process you know I know it's going to be a grind and I have to put work into it and just you know seeing talent like yourself being able to shine through the screen uh, it's an inspiration uh, to, to me and, and mm. voice actors and just actors and actresses in general. Like I said, I, I think you're tremendous in Tehran and uh, it's a mm. show my wife and I enjoy. My daughter's actually going to start it. I believe she said next week, we always share stuff. She'll say, dad, you got to watch this. And then I'll say, okay, well, oh, you great. Watch this, you have and you got to watch this. That's <laughs> so, great. So season three of Tehran is coming. I don't have any dates for you, but season okay. three is going to be really intense. It's it already a pretty intense. intense show, so I'm looking forward to Right, I know. It's like, how much more intense could it get? More intense. <laughs> Excellent, Chilo. I know you got a busy day today. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the premiere. Again, everybody listening out there, be sure to check out Elemental on theaters across the country, across the globe. And uh, Sheila, thank you so much for joining us on your press day. Have a fantastic day. Thank you so weekend. much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you.